Hi there, welcome back to Career Launcher YouTube. Through this series of videos that I was taking, I am taking you through essentially the sets of DILR or the types of questions of arithmetic or algebra in quantitative ability that you should be very, very wary of. The, the types of questions that have appeared in CAT previously. So in every video, I am typically picking either a previous CAT set or a previous set of questions that have appeared in CAT in quantitative ability or DILR. So in this particular video, what I'm going to take you through is a set based on number based puzzle. It is a number based puzzle. Typically numbers is an area where uh, people get frightened, but this is a 2019 CAT set based on numbers. So without much ado into it, let's get started with the question that is there. So this is the set. Okay, so answer the following questions on the basis of the information given below. The following table represents addition of two six digit numbers given in the first and the second rows while the sum is given in the third row. So these are two six digit numbers B H A A G F bhag F and A H J F K F is another six digit number addition of two six digit numbers is giving you a seven digit number because you have an extra digit over here. So this is the seventh digit. That is that has come into the picture. So addition of two digit numbers uh, two six digit numbers is giving you a seven digit number in this case. OK. In the representation, each of the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the 10 digits has been coded with one letter among A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J and K. There is no I. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J and K is the coding given to the 10 digits 0 to 9 in whatever order with distinct letters representing distinct digits. So if there are nine, if there are 10 digits available to us, there are 10 letters also available to us out of which you can typically not find E and D. D and E is not there in the table. Let us see if A is there, B is there, C is there. Uh, e is not there, D is not there, F is there. Then uh, G is there, H is there, J is there and K is there in the table. The other two letters are missing. So the other, so typically we, these six digits, uh, these two six digit numbers and the seven digit resultant sum that is there has to pick eight out of these 10 digits that are there. Okay. Now let us read the questions that are there. Which digit does the letter A represent? So this is a Pakka answer question. I, that, that means that when you solve this, you will be able to distinctly determine what is A. Which letter does B represent? You will be able to distinctly determine what is B. Which among the digits 3, 4, 6 and 7 cannot be represented by the letter D. Okay, D is not here, but which of the, these four digits cannot be represented. What the question is shouting and telling us is that out of these four digits, 3, 4, 6 and 7, one of the digits cannot be a value of D. That means there are three possibilities. There are three other possibilities that D could take. Similarly, if you look at question four, which among the digits four, six, seven, and eight cannot be represented by the letter G. Again, there are three different possibilities, probably minimum of three different possibilities for G. Only one out of these four is not valid for G. That means the question is telling us, if you read the questions when you are also reading the set, the questions will tell you how much of information is there in the data that is given. That means how, till what point can you reach? You can reach to a point where you determine the value of A, you will be able to determine the value of B. However, you may not be able to determine the value of D and G. That means pura arrangement, pura table aapka khul ke nahi banega. That is what the question is telling us. So let us go ahead and look at how to go about solving it. First of all, let us talk about decision making, whether or not I should solve this set. Okay. So this is based on simple logic of addition that we have learned in school. For example, let us say that I have a two three digit numbers 289 and 364. If I have two three digit numbers, what do I do? I say ki boss 9 plus 4 is 3 and I carry 1. This carry is very important here. 1 plus 8 plus 6 is 5, 15. I carry 1 again and hence I write 653 is the sum, right? Something like that. You may have to carry that. This additional digit will come. This additional digit will come into picture. If 1 plus 2 plus whatever this number was, if let us say instead of 364, this was 864, then you will carry this one again and you will get a 1153 as the answer, right? 
so that is where this additional digit will come into picture the additional digit will come into picture because of the carry that is there so once we have figured out that once you understand the basic logic of addition jo school mein kiya tha 7th class 8th class ke pehle 4th class 3rd class mein kiya tha addition this is a question based on that logic of addition and that is what we are going to do also so let us try and figure out what all things can be done and what all things are absolutely easily determinable first things first try to find out jiske values aap nikal sakte ho whatever values are confusing leave it for the end okay so first of all let us try and see try and start where do we start addition from we start addition from the extreme right end let us do that so f plus f is giving f acha if i am adding two digits if i am adding the same digit twice if i am adding the same digit twice i should get the same last digit that is only possible that is only possible just check 1 plus 1 will not end in 1 2 plus 2 will not end in 2. This property is only possible if f is 0. 0 and 0 will add up to 0. So 0 is coded by f. That is one thing we can definitely make sure of. Okay, now we have a 0 over here. f is over here also. So let us write a 0 over here. Let us write a 0 over here as well. There is an f here. Let us write a 0 over here as well. Okay. what else do we know so let us go to the second column and check g plus k equal to a g plus k equal to a doesn't mean that g plus k is exactly equal to a it means that it ends in a the last digit is a the last digit is a so for all we know g g plus k could be something like 8 plus 9 8 plus 9 in that case a will become 7 okay so that is something that we need to take care of okay what are other things that we can probably determine right away what are other things that we can probably determine right away if you are adding any two digit numbers any two single digit numbers because all of these are single digit numbers right if you are adding any two single digit numbers what is the and two distinct numbers what is the maximum sum you can attain you can attain a maximum sum of 9 plus 8 equal to 17 that means you will write 7 and carry 1 to the next column on the left right you write 7 and carry 1 to the next column on the left so just check this particular column a plus j equal to g a plus j equal to g what is the maximum carry we can have here the maximum carry we can have here is 1 so if 1 plus h plus h is equal to f 2 h plus 1 ends in a zero that is not possible because 2 h will be even this sum h plus h will be even even plus 1 cannot give you E, an even number o as the output zero as the output so that is why we can be very sure that there is no carry in this particular column and there is no carry in this particular column so the carry itself is zero if the carry is zero what can we be, be very sure of h plus h h plus h gives you zero in the end that means h has to be 5 5 plus 5 will give you zero So five plus five, you have written zero over here in the sum. What is the carry to the next column? The carry to the next column is one. The carry to the next column is one. Now, one plus b. It is given in the questions that you can clearly represent. You can clearly determine the values of a and b. This is where a and b are, and there are a lot of a's in the table, mind you. Let us try and figure out what will happen here. One plus b plus a gives you a as the last digit. When will this happen? 1 plus b plus a will give you a as the last digit if and only if 1 plus b 1 plus b adds up to 10 it's only then that you add an a and you'll get 10 plus a that means a as the last digit 1 plus b has to end in 0 1 plus b has to end in 0 the moment we have figured that out b must be equal to 9 b must be equal to 9 9 is b we have already determined 5 is h b is 9 so now we have 10 plus a equal to a 10 plus a equal to a what is the carry in the next column 10 plus a whatever you are doing whatever a is the carry will be 1 and this carry has nothing else to get added to and 1 is coming down here and that is represented by a so we can be very sure again that a equal to 1 so we have already determined what a is what b is i think we are good to go to answer the first two questions a can be represented by 1 a represents 1 and b represents 
that is the solution for the first two questions we are done at this point in time you may feel ki boss baki ke questions ke liye there are cases why waste time in cases just leave the question there because we have hardly spent 4 to 5 minutes in the question right from the starting hardly spent 4 to 5 minutes in the question and we have got 6 marks it's a good time to leave if you choose to leave if you choose to leave but if you feel these numbers and these caselets are your strengths then probably you should go ahead and solve the other two questions also go ahead and solve the other two questions also so we have 1 plus b plus 1 ends in 1 that is something we know wherever there is a we can write 1 wherever there is a we can write 1 wherever there is a we can write 1 wherever there is a we have written one now if g plus k g plus k ends in a a and a is one g and k cannot be zero and one na? g and k cannot be zero and one so that their sum is a plain one no g plus k has to add up to 11 g plus k has to add up to 11 that means if you are writing one over here you are also actually carrying one over here so one plus a plus zero is c so c must be equal to two So C must be equal to two. Two is taken by C. One was taken by A. We have put that in the table. Five of the ten letters we have been able to clearly determine what their exact values are. Now we are left with two or three values in the table. Three values in the table. We are left with a G. We are left with a K, and we are left with a J. Now A plus J. There is no carry. Carry in this column is zero. No carry. A plus J is a plain G. A plus J is a plain G. So if we are able to determine what is G and K, we should be clearly able to determine what is G. If we are able to determine G and K, we should be clearly able to determine what is G. Okay. So now, if G plus K ends in a one, if G plus K ends in a one, the last digit of the summation of G and K is one. If G K G plus K ends in a one, G and K could be four and seven. G and K could be four and seven. I am not taking one and two for the values of G because a, if a, a, a one and two are already taken away, so four and seven or G G and K could be three plus eight. Those two those two values are vacant in our table. G and K could be three plus eight or G and K could be seven and four. G and K could be seven and four. Or G and K could be G and K could be three and eight and three, respectively. So these are the cases we can form. These are the cases that we can form. So that the last digit is one. So let us take the first case into consideration. Let us take the first case into consideration. If we are saying that G equal to seven four and K equal to seven. If g equal to four and k equal to seven, what does it make the value of g? What does it make the value of j? Such that g equal to four. In this case, j becomes three. We are considering cases over here. In this case, if g equal to four, j becomes three. So this is the first case. Okay. Let us look at the other case. Let us look at the other case. If g is seven. And k is four. If g is seven and k is four, j becomes six. J becomes six. So that one plus six equal to seven. So these are the two cases considered. On the other side, let us consider the other two cases where g equal to three and k equal to eight. G equal to three and k equal to eight. G equal to eight. Then j equal to seven. J equal to seven. The other case is g equal to eight and k equal to, sir, g equal to a, uh, g equal to three and k equal to eight. In this case, we'll get g equal to three. That means k equal to j equal to two, j equal to two. But can j be equal to two? This is not a possible case. So we can get rid of this case because g, a value of two is already taken by c as a letter. So three comma eight is not a possible case. Three comma eight is not a possible case. That leaves only one more case. That leaves us with only one more case. That is, g equal to eight and k equal to three. If g equal to eight and k equal to three, g equal to eight, j must be seven. J must be seven. Okay. So now using this, what are the three values can g take? G can either be four or seven or eight. 
g can be 4 or 7 or 8 which of these four values which of these three values can the letter g not take which of these three values can the letter g not four values can the letter g not take g can be four or seven or eight g cannot be equal to six and six will be the answer to this question six should be the answer to this question now which among the following digits three four six seven cannot be represented by d so what have we got in all of these cases so far what have we got in all of these cases so far just let us re introspect. Okay. So we know that if G equal to 4, G equal to 4, then K equal to 7, K equal to 7, as a result, J will be equal to 3. This is one case. The other case we know is that if G equal to 7, K will be equal to 4, and J will be equal to 6. The third case that we know is that if g equal to 8 g equal to 8 then k will be equal to 3 as a result again j will be 7 so which of these letters the which of these digits 3 4 6 or 7 cannot be represented by d which of these cannot be represented by d now in this case it is possible in this case it is pretty much possible that d equal to 3 right in this case, it is pretty much possible that d equal to 4. In this case, it is pretty much possible that d equal to 8. But what is an impossible value for d? d can never be equal to 7 because in all of these cases, the letter 7, the, the digit 7 is taken away by at least one of, the, by a different letter. In all of the cases, 7 is not a vacancy at all. 7 is not a possible value for d. 7 is not a possible value for d. So that was the set guys. All the four questions of this particular set were doable. The first two questions were absolute sitters. And if you are able to, if by looking at the set, by putting in the thought for the first two, three minutes, if you are able to figure out that A equal to one and B equal to nine, that was a starting point. You could have left clear, clearly left the other two questions while solving the first two questions. Otherwise, if you are good, in numbers, if you feel you are comfortable in forming these cases and you are sure that you are probably not going to miss out on these cases, then it was a question the entire set was worth solving. So that was the video, guys. If you like it, please hit on the like button and also subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our videos going forward. Thank you.